It is a joy to be here with you in Bonita Springs. Do you folks realize what you have here? There are very few congregations, at least in the Presbyterian Church USA, that would have a full house downstairs on Memorial Day weekend. Usually I'd be preaching to a group about this size over here. <laughs> and what a choir. And I realize you're down. You're down to 55 or 60 instead of 120. But wow, what a 55 or 60, I'll tell you. That was a tremendous anthem. Now, there's a delightful young lady who runs your PowerPoint. What is her name? Sophie. Sophie. And uh, after I preached at the first service, which was a wonderful service, she said, um, uh, Pastor, you didn't cover all the, the scripture we had on the PowerPoint, and, and, and so I'm going to try to do better this time, but if, <laughs> but if it's different, it's not Sophie's fault, it's my fault. So, By the way, she's graduating, she's coming to Lakeland to Southeastern University, which is a wonderful university in, uh, in Lakeland. First scripture is from our New Testament lesson, from Luke chapter 22. And he took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. Now turning over to the Old Testament lesson, from 1 Chronicles chapter 16, that's probably not a book you used for morning devotions this week. 1 Chronicles chapter 16, beginning with verse 1. They brought the ark of God and set it inside the tent that David had pitched for it. And they presented burnt offerings and fellowship offerings before God. After David had finished sacrificing the burnt offerings and fellowship offerings, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord. Then he gave a loaf of bread, a cake of dates, and a cake of raisins to each Israelite man and woman. Skipping over to verse 7. That day David first appointed Asaph and his associates to give praise to the Lord in this manner. Give praise to the Lord, proclaim his name, make known among the nations what he has done. Sing to him, sing praise to him, tell of his wonderful acts, glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Look to the Lord and his strength. Seek his face always. Remember the wonders he has done, his miracles and the judgments he pronounced. You, his servants, the descendants of Israel, his chosen ones, the children of Jacob. He is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. He remembers his covenant forever. The promise he made for a thousand generations, the covenant he made with Abraham, the oath he swore to Isaac, he confirmed it to Jacob as a decree. And then over the end of the chapter, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love endures forever. Cry out, save us, God our Savior. Gather us and deliver us from the nations that we may give thanks to your holy name and glory in your praise. Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel from everlasting to everlasting. First Chronicles 16. It also can be found, many of those same verses, in uh, Psalm 105 and Psalm 106. Let us pray. Father, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. We all dream do you remember any of your dreams? In the Old Testament, Jacob remembered one of his dreams, a dream of a ladder that reached up to heaven and angels were ascending and descending. In the New Testament, Joseph remembered a dream in which an angel said to him, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife for what is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. I had an unusual dream about two or three weeks ago. Now let me set the stage for you for this dream. As Doug pointed out, my wife Joyce and I live in Lakeland, Florida. 
And Lakeland is a city of just over 100,000 people with a metropolitan area of about 250 to 300,000. It is soon to become the hub of Amazon Prime Air in the southeast United States. And they're building a huge facility at the Lakeland International Airport. <laughs> going to employ 1,000 people, and we're going to have hundreds of planes in and out of Lakeland. Lakeland is, for those of you from Michigan, the winter home of the Detroit Tigers. But for most of us in Lakeland, we know it as the home of public supermarkets where shopping is a pleasure. <laughs> Lakeland also is known for a video that went viral about a year or a year and a half ago. Maybe you saw it. It wasn't just on local television. It was on all the national news media. Now, we have near Lakeland a, a park called the Circle B Bar Reserve. And I like to go out about once a month. I used to go once a week, but about once a month, and hike at Circle B Bar. All sorts of wonderful wildlife, flowers, and big alligators. In fact, I've been pretty close a few times walking by some of those alligators. Well, in this video, somebody was walking through the park and here came a ginormous ancient alligator and it came up from one pond across the trail and down into the upper pond. It was huge. <laughs> and it went Viral. Okay, now keep all of that in mind as I tell you about my dream. It's a true dream. In this dream, I had a meeting with somebody, or maybe it was a couple of people. I think somebody, I think one of them was John F. Kennedy, but it was in my dream. And I left, and then I wanted to see where I had met with that person or people, and I came back and I thought, oh, it's down a hill. I don't remember them being a hill, but I came down this grassy hill, and there was the meeting area, and right beyond it was a, a body of water. It was either a river or a pond, and as I was looking at that area, suddenly a large alligator came out of the pond, and I thought, I best be turning and going back up the hill, which I did in my dream, and as I turned around, I noticed the alligator was following me. And then I began to run up the hill, and I noticed the alligator got up on all fours and began to run up the hill also. And with that, I woke up. <laughs> now, it just so happened that that morning, I was uh, meeting some friends of mine at 5.30 a.m. at Lowe's. That's where you meet when you meet together to go golf somewhere in another city. And we met at Lowe's, and we took off, and we went up to... Orlando to Walt Disney World to the Magnolia Golf Course. Beautiful golf course, championship course, and I, things were going well. I was enjoying the game. We got to the sixth hole, and if you've played there, you know it's, it's a really neat hole. You go across a small body of water, and then there's a bunker, which some people call sand trap. There was a bunker, and it's in the form of Mickey's ears. Very cute. It's a par three. And just on the other side is, is the green, and I thought, this is a piece of cake. So I, I addressed my ball and I, I sent it down between the bunker and the water. Ugh. So I went down and I got to the ball and I thought I'm just going to chip this up onto the green. And then I remembered the dream. And I was <laughs> next to this water and I shanked the ball, I took a double bogey, it, 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 was a, it was a mess. In one way or another, we're always remembering, we're always dreaming. Fred Beekner, famed author, Presbyterian minister, he's 92 years old. Fred Beekner, in one of his books, talks about a dream that he had. And in this dream, he went to a hotel. It was a lovely hotel, and he, and he has had a room that he loved. He said, I don't remember much about the room. I just remember how it made me feel. I was at peace. I had a sense of joy. And then he left the 
hotel and checked out and went elsewhere, but as typical of dreams, he returned to that hotel. He was given a room. He went to that room, and it wasn't the same. He was he felt cramped. He, he felt miserable. And, and so he went down to the desk clerk and he said, I was here before. And I had the most wonderful room. And, and in this room, I felt at peace. Ah, the desk clerk said, I know just the room. It's called remember. When you come here in the future, always ask for a room called remember. We're always remembering, aren't we? Memorial Day is a time for us to remember. Now our memories come to us helter-skelter. Some are pleasant, some are happy, some are sad, some are painful. You, you open a drawer at your house. You pull out an old letter and you read it and all the memories come flooding back. Or you find an old picture and the memories are there. You smell a particular smell. And there are memories. You're, you're 17, you're 20 again. A couple of months ago I was playing golf with some of my friends at Cleveland Heights Golf Course in Lakeland. We play every Monday. And we come in always afterwards and, and we have lunch at the golf course and I went over to get cleaned up and I heard somebody call my name. And so I, I stopped and it was a lady from my former congregation. She said, there's somebody here I think you'd like to see. Fine. I went into the room where she was and there were about 15 or 20 ladies and they were gathering to play bridge. And there right in the middle of them was my 10th grade English teacher from Newcastle High School in Newcastle, Pennsylvania. She was Miss Joseph. I was, what, 15 at the time when you're in 10th grade. She was 21 or 22, her first year teaching. I don't remember much about English, but I thought she was wonderful. <laughs> and she still looked wonderful, and we gave each other a hug, and I took her over to see my, my golf buddies and, and introduced them, and after she left, they said, you know what, she looks a heck of a lot better than you do, I gotta tell you that. <laughs> Well, I got home that night and I got out all my old yearbooks and, and I began to look at pictures and there were football games and basketball games and choir concerts and there was band and it was wonderful. All those memories come flooding back. Tomorrow, of course, is Memorial Day. It's a day, as Doug has pointed out, specifically set aside to remember the men and women who gave their lives for this nation, that we might have the freedom that we have now, this is a time to remember that they made the ultimate sacrifice. When our children were young, I used to take them to the cemetery or to Memorial Day parades so that they would understand what this day is about. And I know that they've continued to do the same with their children, our grandchildren. My parents used to also take me to the cemetery when I was a little boy on Memorial Day because that was the day that you'd go out and you'd clean off the stones and you'd plant geraniums up north around the, the gravesides and you remember your loved ones who had gone on to be with the Lord. The room called Remember. King David entered the room called Remember. That's what we read about in 1 Chronicles chapter 16. Now, when Moses brought the people of Israel out of Egypt, led them for 40 years through the wilderness, and then Joshua took the mantle and led them across the Jordan River, and they conquered much of the Holy Land, Jericho, Ai, many other cities, but not all of it. They didn't possess all their possessions. And so fast forward a hundred, quite a few hundred years, and King David is now the king. And David is going to consolidate the kingdom and expand the kingdom. And he wants to find a new capital city. And so there's a city that had not been conquered back in the days of Joshua or since. And he decided to take that Jebusite city called Jerusalem and make it his new capital city. 
And not only that, but to make it the worship center for the nation and to bring the Ark of the Covenant that contained the Ten Commandments, bring that into Jerusalem. Of course, he wanted to build the temple and God would not permit him. That was for his son Solomon. But David brought the Ark in and that's what we read about in chapter 16. They brought in the Ark of God, set it inside the tent that David had pitched for it. They offered burnt offerings and peace offerings before God. And then it says that David sang this song of thanks. Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him. Sing praises to him. Tell of his wondrous works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Seek the Lord in his strength. Seek his presence continually. It was the It was musical. It was singing praise to God like this fabulous choir has done. And as you sang earlier in the service, and then look, verse 12, remember the wondrous works that he has done, his miracles and the judgments he has uttered. And then it goes down, remember God's covenant forever, the word that he commanded for a thousand generations, the covenant he made with Abraham. Enter the room called remember. Remember what God has done. Remember how God brought you out of Egypt, brought you across the Jordan, brought you into this land, David is saying. Our Jewish friends every year celebrate the Passover. This year it actually coincided with the same weekend as as Easter. At the Passover meal, there is lamb and unleavened bread remembering that the people left in haste from Egypt. There's bitter herbs because of the bitterness of the slavery in Egypt. There's wine. And every year at the Passover, the youngest child says, why is this night different from all other nights? And then the story of the Exodus is explained. And that final terrible plague that came across upon Egypt when the angel of death swept across the land but the people sacrificed the lamb and they put the blood of the lamb on the doorposts of their home and the angel of death passed over them and they left Egypt and so they celebrate the Passover Jesus was celebrating the Passover with his disciples that's what our New Testament lesson was about he was with his disciples in that upper room we call it the last supper He took the bread, he took the wine, and as he took the bread, he broke it. He said, this is my body given for you. And then the wine, this is the blood of the covenant shed for many for the remission of sins. This do in remembrance of me. And so when you gather for the Lord's Supper, You remember in a very special way the cross of Christ and what Jesus Christ has done for us. When we enter the room called Remember, we find not just the past. We also find hope for tomorrow. Eugene Peterson, who just recently passed away, wrote, Hope is a response to the future which has its foundation in the promises of God. The room called Remember. It's a place of being in the past, but a place of expectation as well, because reflection and faith equips us for the future. Again, Fred Beekner wrote, Hope stands up to its knees in the past and keeps its eyes on the future. There has never been a time past when God was not with us as the strength beyond our strength, the wisdom beyond our wisdom. To remember the past is to see that we are here today by God's grace and that we have survived is a gift. Close quote. The past, the future, memory, expectation, remembrance, and hope. It's all there. We remember And then we wait. We wait for the one whose face we know because somewhere we have seen it in a mirror dimly. And we long to see him face to face. The thief on the cross cried out, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said, today, 
you will be with me in paradise. Well, Doug, as he has pointed out, is from western Pennsylvania. He's from a little town where I went to college. He's from New Wilmington, Pennsylvania. And he served as the senior pastor for 14 years at Memorial Park Presbyterian Church, a beautiful suburban church outside of Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh at one time, not now, but at one time had over 200 Presbyterian churches in the county. One of those old historic churches, still a very strong congregation, is the Shady Side Presbyterian Church. For 30 years, Shadyside Church had Hugh Thompson Kerr as their senior pastor. He also served as moderator of the General Assembly in 1930, back when we liked General Assembly. And he also was a hymn writer, and he gave us a very beautiful and meaningful hymn. Listen to these words. God of the past, our times are in thy hand, with us abide. Lead us by faith to hope's true promised land, be thou our guide. God of the coming years, through paths unknown, we follow thee. When we are strong, Lord, leave us not alone, our refuge be. Be thou for us in life our daily bread, our heart's true home, when all our years have sped. The God of the past, the God of today, the God of our coming years, the God who said to us, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Remember, give thanks, have courage. Today, tomorrow, enter the room called Remember and give thanks to God as you live with courage into the future. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen.